Hi, I am Sheikh Mahbub Basha. Welcome to my channel. Happy Learn. Hi students. Welcome. This is the third day. Okay. Today we will understand the relation between rise in temperature and the material nature. So for that, let us. how some arrangement some activity as shown in this picture take a big jar here it is a glass jar transparent okay sufficiently big take hot water in it the temperature may be 60 70 80 your choice take hot water in this cylinder jar then take two test tubes boiling test tubes sufficiently large in size take water in one of the test tubes and take oil in another test tube using the retort stand arrange these two test tubes such that half of the test tube is submerged into the hot water then put a hold rubber caps arrange thermometers in both of this test tubes so we have a big jar hot water in it two test tubes submerged into it those test tubes are fixed using the retort stands then there are rubber corks one hole in those rubber corks place two thermometers one in the test tube containing water one in the test tube containing oil now carefully observe the temperature rise in the thermometers you note down the rise in temperature for every 1 minute it is your choice for 2 minutes or 3 minutes or for half minute it is your choice so note down the rise in temperature in these two thermometers you will notice that the rise in temperature is more in oil whereas the rise in temperature is less not a comparable to that oil so there is rise of temperature in both but more in case of oil less in case of water though we have given equal conditions like both the test tubes are submerged into the same hot water and we are waiting for the same time duration then the rise in temperature in oil is more when compared to rise in temperature of the water so we conclude that the rise in temperature of a substance is depending on the nature of the material so it is not equal for all the materials so for oil it is something for water it is something and for some other substance it is something else so this particular property is called the heat capacity so we will learn in detail in the next topics okay my dear students let us understand the relation between the mass of the object and the quantity of heat required to raise its temperature so let us do an activity take two cylinders two jars okay both are glass both are of same size okay now take water you can take any other material like oil or whatever it may be so because it is no cost i am preferring water take water 250 g in one beaker 500 g in another beaker so in both the cylinders we have selected We have taken water only, but 
in one cylinder it is 250 gram and in another cylinder it is 500 grams. Now let us put these cylinders on a heating furnace or you can keep it in water bath, hot water you can put Suppose I am using a heating plate, I am using induction stove, you can say. When both are kept simultaneously and by putting the thermometer, you observe, you observe the rise in temperature. Because you have taken the same water in both the cylinders, initial temperature is equal or equal in both the cylinders water sign temperature is same in both the cases. Let it be 30 degrees Celsius. Initial temperature is 30 degrees Celsius in cylinder 1 and 30 degrees Celsius in cylinder 2. Now, you wait for rise of temperature up to 50 degrees Celsius. Initially both were 30 degrees Celsius. The one of the Temperature raised to 50 degrees Celsius. Note down the time taken. The 250 gram water will first raise its temperature to 50 degrees Celsius. Note down the time taken for that and take that cylinder and keep it aside. Now wait for wait for the same 50 degrees Celsius temperature in the other cylinder which is having 500 grams of water. So you will notice that double the time is taken for the rise of temperature for that 500 grams water. As the masses were 250 grams and 500 grams for the rise of temperature from 30 to 50 degrees Celsius the time taken are differing if it is a 5 minutes for 250 milligrams it will be 10 minutes for 500 grams that means more the mass more the time is taken to raise the temperature in both the cases we are following the same rise of temperature from 30 to 50 30 to 50 so in case of 250 grams, it is 5 minutes, for example, then it will be 10 minutes in case of 500 grams. So the conclusion is, more the mass, more the time required. So from this activity, we can conclude that the heat energy required to raise the temperature is directly proportional to mass of the body. More the mass, more the heat energy required for the same rise of temperature. So, for the same rise of temperature delta T, more heat energy is required for a body having more mass. So, you can write Q is directly proportional to M. Q is heat energy required. M is mass of the object where delta T is equal to constant. That means for same rise of temperature, more heat energy is required for more mass. Okay. So Q proportional to M at delta T equal to constant. This is equation number 1. Now let us do another activity. This time we are taking equal masses. Initially it was 250 and 500 grams. Now we are taking equal mass of water. You can take 500 gram, 500 gram. So in two cylinders 
500 grams of water and 500 grams of water is taken and the time taken for a rise of temperature is noted. If you place the cylinder for 10 minutes, if you place the cylinder on a heating filament, suppose induction furnace, for 10 minutes, the rise in temperature, for example, let it be 20 degrees Celsius. If you heat it for 10 minutes, the temperature has risen by 20 degrees Celsius. Now, if you heat the same, if you heat the same 500 grams of water for 20 minutes, initially 10 minutes, now 20 minutes, you will notice that the rise in temperature is double, 40 degrees Celsius. So, for uh, more than rise of temperature, you have to give more heat energy. At constant mass, in both the cases we have taken, same mass. At constant mass, you have to give more heat energy if you want uh, more rise of temperature. So, you can write the equation. Q proportional to delta T. Q proportional to delta T. Where M is a constant. Q proportional to delta T. Where M is a constant. Uh, let it be equation number 2. Now from these two equations. Equation 1 and equation 2. You can write that. Q is directly proportional to M into delta T. Q is directly proportional to M into delta T. And if you want to remove this proportionality, if you want to write a equality, what do you say? What will you do? We use a proportionality constant. Here, we use a proportionality constant uh, small s. Then Q is equal to S into M into delta T. By rearranging for convenience to pronouns, you can write the same as Q equal to M into S into delta T. Q equal to M S delta T. This is equation number 3. Here, the S, the S is a proportionality constant. It is called as specific heat. Specific heat. And from that equation number 3, you can write S is equal to, S is equal to Q by, Q by M delta T. Q by M delta T. So S is equal to Q by M delta T. Then from this equation, the unit for the unit for specific heat can be written if it is a SI system. Q is measured in joules, mass is measured in kgs, kilograms, and temperature is measured in Kelvin. So the SI unit for specific heat will be joule per kg per Kelvin. I repeat, the SI unit of specific heat is Joule per kg per Kelvin. And in CGS system, heat energy is measured in calories, mass is measured in grams, rising temperature is measured in degrees Celsius. Hence, the CGS unit of specific heat is calorie per gram per degree Celsius. Calorie per gram per degree Celsius.